Ready or Not has a lot of guns to choose from. But what if you want more? Well, I have a solution for you. Mods. That's right. With the power of modding, there are even more weapons and accessories you can add to Ready or Not. Want your latest hype beast overpriced optic mount? Check. Want the latest rifle that everyone is cloning because some blurry DoD pictures showed some seals using them? Check. Want whatever this is? Check. In this video, I'll be going over some of my favorite weapon mods I use. So, let's get started. The first weapon mod is the Staccato P. This is a 2011 pistol made by the company Staccato and is actually in use with a number of SWAT teams, including LAPD SWAT. Put simply, a 2011 is an upgraded 1911. Compared to a 1911, a 2011 is a wider gun that accommodates a double stack magazine. This allows a 2011 to hold much more ammo than a 1911, while retaining the latter's best features, namely its trigger and grip angle. Historically, 2011s have been very popular in the competition world, but have seen very little duty use. Due to their tight tolerances, many 2011s can only be run with specific ammo and don't do well in adverse conditions. One of the premier companies that made 2011s was a company called STI. Why did they choose those three letters? I couldn't tell you. During the company's life, they made very high quality 2011s for competition use, and they were quite popular for that purpose. Unfortunately, the competition shooting market is quite small. So in 2020, STI rebranded themselves as Staccato, and began making 2011s intended for duty use. The Staccato P is their full-size duty pistol. Some of you may wonder what the point of this gun is, because compared to other full-size duty pistols, it's incredibly expensive. The Staccato P comes optic ready out of the box, which isn't something all pistols are capable of stock. It also has a fiber optic front sight with a blacked out rear sight, a holdover from the competition world that's also begun to find favor in the duty and defensive world. The gun comes with a flared magwell that makes reloads much easier to perform. Another feature from the competition world that can be useful on a full-sized pistol. And of course, the Staccato P retains the great trigger and ergonomics that are inherent to the 2011. It's much easier to shoot than most striker-fired handguns. The best thing Staccato seems to have done with this pistol, however, is to improve its reliability. Most users report that the gun is much more reliable compared to 2011s of the past, and the large amount of law enforcement agencies who have approved the pistol for duty use seems to support these claims. The mod itself replicates the Staccato P well. The fiber optic front sights, flared magwell, and unique grip are all here. And the magazine capacity has been increased to a realistic 16 rounds for the 9mm version. It can attach optics and attachments, and is a lot of fun to use. The mod also comes with a number of different colors and engraving options you can choose from. Of course, I went for the LSPD SWAT version. It's a fun gun to use, and in my opinion, a vast improvement over the M45A1 it replaces. The next weapon mod is the MP5 SD6. The MP5 is perhaps the most popular 9mm submachine gun used in law enforcement. Its roller delayed system makes it an accurate and reliable system. And it works. Used by numerous different law enforcement agencies and militaries, its ubiquity is a testament to its effectiveness. The MP5 SD is a suppressed variant of the MP5. Created in 1974, the MP5 SD's standout feature is its built in suppressor. The suppressor's main function is to reduce muzzle velocity so that the bullet does not break the sound barrier, and thus does not make a supersonic crack when fired. Today, most people use subsonic ammo in conjunction with a suppressed weapon, but the MP5 SD was actually designed to be used with supersonic 9mm ammo. This means that almost any 9mm fired through a MP5 SD will be very quiet. One other neat fact about the suppressor is that it can be fired with water inside, now, I don't know anyone who could take advantage of this, but it's a neat feature. The MP5 SD6 is the suppressed variant that comes with a skeleton buttstock and 3 round burst setting. It's a very quiet gun and compact, 
making it ideal for those who need to enter small areas and do their work quietly. Put your hands up! Many different special operations units have made use of the weapon, as well as some police units. The mod changes the MP510 to look like the MP5 SD6. It's fairly well replicated, though you need to equip one of the stock suppressors. Otherwise, you'll have an MP5 SD that sounds unsuppressed. Another quirk of this mod is that the MT Reload will be a bolt release one, rather than an HK slap. This seems to be a result of this mod being a remodel of the MP510 without new animations. But overall, still a neat mod. The next weapon, and only AR-15 on this list, is the L119A2. Now you might be wondering, why mod another AR platform into Ready or Not when there's so many already? Well, the L119A2 is a bit different. A Canadian-made rifle that ended up in the hands of British Tier 1 units. Now, despite the country they're made in, Colt Canada has a reputation for making some of the highest quality AR-15s in the world. One of these rifles is called the C8 Special Forces Weapon. This is an AR-15, but with a heavier barrel and overgassed for adverse conditions. In the early 2000s, the United Kingdom Special Forces were looking for a new rifle. Specifically, one that could operate in a multitude of climates. After rigorous testing, they decided the Colt Canada Special Forces weapon would be the rifle of their choice, designating it the L119A1. Once it was adopted, it became a popular choice among other British military units, including, of course, the Special Air Service. In 2013, the United Kingdom asked for an upgrade to the L119A1. Colt Canada obliged, and the resulting rifle was the L119A2. While the A1 is still more of a conventional AR-15, the L119A2 has some significant differences. The most notable is its integrated upper receiver. The majority of AR-15s have the handguard separate from the upper receiver. This means that you can replace the handguard with whatever you want. However, one issue with this is that you are limited to placing an optical device either on the handguard or the upper receiver. Placing an optic in between, or bridging, can lead to loss of zero. In contrast, the L119A2 combines the handguard and upper receiver into one long piece, called an integrated upper receiver. This means that a user has the freedom to mount an optical device wherever they want, without worrying about losing zero. However, this system has some disadvantages. The rail is prone to heating up very quickly, and the one-piece upper makes it much more difficult to clean in the field. Is this an improvement over a conventional AR-15? It's hard to say, but it is interesting to note that an integrated upper receiver is incredibly rare to find among other AR-15s. Soldiers also generally seem to prefer the older A1 over the newer A2, due to the problems with overheating and cleaning. Normally, this wouldn't be a rifle that would garner much attention outside of the military circles that use them. However, in 2019, the L119A2 was thrust into the spotlight. In January 2019, a terrorist attack was carried out in Nairobi, Kenya. Five terrorists arrived at a hotel and began attacking civilians. A British SAS operator in the country, by the name of Christian Craighead, was one of the individuals to respond, as well as many members of the Kenyan police force and other members of different organizations. The attack lasted almost a day, with Christian Craighead personally eliminating two of the terrorists. The rifle he was using, of course, was the L119A2. The mod replicates the L119A2 very well, from the integrated upper receiver to the shitty charging handle. There's even an option to replicate the paint job on Christian Craighead's rifle. It's a great looking model, and one of the better looking weapon mods I've seen. One quirk of this mod is that it replaces the M4A1 rather than the Mark 18 Mod Zero. In the 1.0 release, the M4A1 was removed. So what I did was download the Sniper or Not mod, which brings back the M4A1. The L119A2 will replace the M4A1, and you'll be able to use it while still having access to the Mark 18 Mod Zero. Great mod overall. And one final thing. Canadian civilians used to be able to buy these guns. Hopefully we'll get to again. Maybe if you subscribe, I'll buy one. 
A lot of you didn't like that I put the F90 and F tier in my rifle tier list. You don't approve. Well, too bad. With this mod, I've decided to add insult to injury. This mod replaces the F90 entirely. The Springfield VHS-2 is another 5.56 bullpup. Developed in Croatia, the first generation was introduced in 2008, and an improved version, the VHS-2, was announced in 2013. And in 2022, Springfield began importing the weapon into the US as the Springfield Hellion. In my books, that alone makes it a better gun than the F90. The VHS-2 has quite a number of innovative features for a bullpup. It has a relatively ergonomic fire selector, a stock that allows for length of pull adjustment, and the ability to swap ejection port sides. It's meant to be a serious modern take on a bullpup, and it's caught on with some organizations. The VHS-2 is of course the standard issue rifle for the Croatian army, but it's also been used heavily by both the Iraqi military and police forces. Between 2015 to 2017, this rifle was frequently seen being used by Iraqis fighting against ISIS. Whatever shortcomings us spoiled westerners might come up with about the VHS-2, it is undoubtedly a tried and true combat rifle. The mod is a good looking representation of the VHS-2. Everything from the long carry handle to the adjustable stock is here. One other interesting thing about the mod is that the VHS-2 is using G36 mags rather than AR-15 mags. This is not a mistake. The Croatian military has quite a large number of G36 mags, so rather than disposing of them, the VHS-2 was made to accept them. The export Hellion version takes AR-15 mags instead. And of course, the VHS-2 is a bullpup. The gun is noticeably shorter and easier to maneuver in close quarters. It's just as enjoyable to use as the F90, if not more. Overall, great mod. Finally, we have the AK-12. The AK-12 is one of Kalashnikov Concern's newer rifles, and was intended to be the latest and greatest version of the AK. However, in regards to performance, it's become world famous for all the wrong reasons. The AK-12 project began in 2011 as part of the Russian Ratnik trials to modernize the Russian military. Earlier prototypes showcased novel ideas. A new fire selector, a rail dust cover for mounting optics, and a new folding stock that can be folded to either side of the rifle. However, the final version of the AK-12 was much more similar to previous AKs. The main updates the production version of the AK-12 offered was a railed handguard and dust cover, folding crane stock with adjustable length of pole, and a new magazine. These changes aren't dramatic. Many different aftermarket companies make parts for AKs that can replicate the functionality of the AK-12. But while it wasn't revolutionary, People expected that the AK-12 would be at minimum, on par with AKs of the past. Well, in February 2022, users of the AK-12 were in for a rude awakening. One feature of the AK-12 is that it has a two-round burst. The idea is that a soldier would be able to hit a target with two rounds on burst, rather than one when on semi-auto mode. An interesting idea, but in practice, it doesn't seem to work well. Feedback seems to indicate that the two-round burst can sometimes become a three-round burst and makes the internals more complicated and prone to failures. Okay, that's the other thing. Sometimes it likes to randomly do three. Uh, we have no idea why. Additionally, there have been reports of the dust cover failing to hold zero. Also, the safety can fall off the semi-auto setting and becomes a problem the user has to fix before being able to use the weapon again. Uh, the selector stop is significantly smaller than other AKs, which means you could just do this and just completely override the selector. Fun fact, if these reports are true, then the two round burst on Airsoft AK-12s is more reliable than the real thing. The Airsoft furniture is also allegedly made out of better polymer and the dust covers hold zero better than the real thing. Once the invasion of Ukraine began, the AK-12's issues became very well known. Rumor has it, Elite Spetsnaz units elected to use old AKMs in storage rather than use the AK-12. However, it's remained popular in the war for one interesting reason. AK-12s are popular among Ukrainian soldiers as war trophies. So with all these issues, why do I like the AK-12 mod? Well, I think the AK-12 looks very cool. The railed handguard and dust cover, along with the muzzle brake and stock, give it a unique look. It also gives it the ability to mount attachments. 
and since it's a game, I don't have to care about wandering zeros. The mod itself is a faithful representation of the AK-12, other than the two round burst. But personally, I don't like using burst mode on guns anyways. The recoil has also been reduced to match the AK-12, given that it's a 545 gun and has a ridiculously large muzzle brake. It's a fun gun to use and gives you more optics to choose from than the SLR-47 it replaces. And of course, for those of you who played a certain shooter in 2013, this gun is pure nostalgia. So, those are my favorite weapon mods in Ready or Not. But what do you think? Let me know what your favorite weapon mods are down below, and I might check them out.